Exodus chapter. Exodus chapter. Seventeen. I just go on to say something. Seventeen, chapter. Sorry, words sixteen. Verse sixteen. <clears throat> just leave it there for now. We've been going through. Thank you for all the people who came here for the eight days of prayer, and so many people participated in the prayer. We are praying for Israel and the situation evolving there. We've been praying. And I, in the midst of the thing, I was teaching you for the church to understand where the world is, where Israel is, where all these things are, where the church should be. It is not just a point blankly, we just to set up, we just to go uh, dive into something and without understanding. Because the people perish without knowledge. You need to understand, how do we understand Bible? How do you use a biblical land? Israel is a biblical land, but we need to understand what is God's character, what he dealt with from Genesis to Revelations and teaches the character of God. He's not, we don't want the character of Israel as a, as a nation, as a people. We don't want the character of uh, you know, the character of Jews. We don't want the character of uh, all the Palestinian people. We don't want the character of people from India. <laughs> it's breaking the mold. If you want to understand God's character, we need to break our own mold. If you don't understand, we, are, we cannot have the heaven's mold. A body of Christ, 1 Isaiah chapter 9, it said the, the, the kingdom will be, the, the government will be upon his shoulder. You know, people run to England from all over the place, wherever there is a trouble, Afghanistan or Pakistan, or, and people run to England. Because, you know why? There is a proper government there. It's not they don't have anything in those countries. I'm more richer in India than here. I mean, this is the case with many people. Okay, my reason is different. I came to serve the Lord. But there are people there. Why? The government is the most important thing. I say chapter 9, it says the government will be upon his shoulder. Now government is nowhere. America is in battle against one another. No Congress leaders and, uh, you know, they just do something. We will stop that, stop this. Government is diminishing all around the world. Why? The church need to understand the rule and reign. Jesus said, you know, people, Herod said, are you the king? He said so. But my kingdom is not of this world. That kingdom is coming. In that one, you and I will rule and reign with him. Shall we give a clap to the king of kings and the lord of lords? <laughs> my heart desire is not to have people seated in the church full of people, all good, all flashy lights and everything okay. We sing and dance and do all the things. We show off ourselves. But if we don't have the character of God, the government is not on our shoulder. The government should be on the shoulder of everyone, not just a few people singing from the front and standing there and instead of a, I'm pretty looking or instead of a doing, I'm performing something. It's not about that. The kingdom should be upon everybody. You know, I was teaching Joy when she was younger and growing in the Lord. You know, I see people take up this government seriously in the sense. Because know who you are, automatically you understand your identity is the one always the enemy attack. When we know what our identity, otherwise we become insecure, we try to pamper ourselves, we try to, everything is focused on ourselves because we do not know who we are. We become Muppets, they say in England. <laughs> don't be a Muppet, they say. Because you know why? We don't have understanding who we are. The government is resting upon yourself or want to rest upon yourself. It's not about your degree. It's not about your chartered accountancy or a solicitor or a barrister or a doctor or an engineer. This is something unique. God wanted to place his government upon your shoulder. It's a prophetic word Isaiah has spoken has not fulfilled yet because the church need to understand government all over the world will be in chaos. The war started in Israel, and there is not a great, if there, is a, if there was an election just before, the, just before the war on the 7th of October, the unfortunate day, 
Netanyahu would not be in the, the prime minister of Israel. Do you understand? If you know the politics, you know what it was going on. In the midst of the war, they had to form a joint coalition or a coalition, coalition government in order to run the war cabinet. The government all over the world will be diminished because the kingdom of, kingdom of heaven is coming. I say Christmas coming is already people started singing Christmas song on TV and everywhere we go. Don't, you sing the song and enjoy Christmas, but don't be caught up. The government is coming upon your shoulder. Already is, uh, already is on the shoulder of many people in the church. Like That is a church I would like to see. Not just flimsy, talking, joking, laughing, and missing the purpose. I'm not running a social club. I will run a successful social club if I wanted to. If I wanted to bring the government upon your shoulder, you need to understand who we are, first of all. Israel, this verse I put it on, I want to tell you. Israel, God, God set up a delivered them from Egypt. I'm telling the story of Israel where we are. God delivered Israel from Egypt and the cruel bondage. Now they're coming, defeating every one of the enemies, and they were trembling before Israel because the Lord God is going in front of them. Okay, the Lord God is going in front of them like a pillar of cloud. Suddenly he withdraw himself, coming behind, and children of Israel are going in front of them. This is a God. Now, final, here is a battle going on in 17. This is against the Amalekite. Joshua is fighting. Moses is a bit older, and he has not got much of a strength, but he's alive. He's alive. But the war is going between the Amalekite and Israel. There is a powerful war. And as the children of Israel... As the children of Israel is listening carefully and focusing on the Lord, what is happening? Israel was winning the war. So they lifted up Moses' hand in this whole chapter, you find. They, Moses was lifting up his hand. That means the church should be lifting up the hands. That's what the eight days of prayer is about. It's not a gimmick. It's not just Israel should win. This is a spiritual war. Uh, let me take you the chapter, I tell you. This is a spiritual war in the natural. Yes, people are fighting. Yes, Ukraine, there is a war. And all the nation, many, many nations in Africa, civil war already. You know, they're all set up a push to one side. You don't see them on the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the on the news media because here something big is going on and everybody is focused on because this is a spiritual war. Amalekites, uh, you know, Amalekites were winning. This, this place, if you read, when they started, when Moses' hand became tired, every man and woman of God, devil's scheme is to make you tired, make you sick, that you cannot lift up your hand and pray. Lift up your holy hand and pray. It's not about singing and dancing. It's okay. You need to lift up the holy hand. It's not about doing all sorts of a thing. I'm not really coming to a social club. You need to stand there to hold your hand. The enemy will be defeated. The enemy against you and your family and your children. Holy hand. It's not a proud hand. Shall we shout holy hand? Amalekite were winning. And finally, they put a stone underneath the hand of <laughs> Moses. The story is the, the war won. What you need to read here, this is a spiritual thing I tell you. He said, Moses said, for hand were lifted up to the throne of God. The Lord will be at war against Amalekite from generation to generation. What is it? <laughs> That's why I'm saying this is a spiritual war. Here Moses is saying, and he just built an altar. Let me go to the main point. I wanted to teach you these things so the body of Christ is strong and victorious. Now Moses built a war, is one. Moses built an altar and the banner of the Lord. The banner. The banner over me is love. Now we moved on. 
This is what he did. From generation to generation, okay, one war is over. Why this war should happen? In 2023, we have United Nations, we have that, we have this. Because you know why? Satan is a person, the short and sweet I tell you, lawlessness is, is the enemy's plan. Okay? Lawlessness. Lawlessness. There is no rule and reign. There is no government. Do all sorts of things. Even in the United Nations, there are rules there. What you should do? You should not bomb a hospital. But there is a rule there. You should not really, the hospital should be legitimate. You cannot have operate a command control center under a thing, and under the hospital. You cannot operate that. Truth will come out in the thing. There is a lawlessness is the work of the enemy. It confuses people. Lawlessness. You should not do that one. You should not do this one. They do that. They, other people do this one. So this war is a spiritual war. Lawlessness, he is Satan. Demonic thing is a lawlessness. There is no law for him. Because he's a law unto himself. Devil is a law unto himself. He attack your identity. And then try to have, if, you, if your identity is attacked, you are nobody. You're nobody. You're nobody in the kingdom of God. Identity is the most important thing. And when I preach this one, let me take it to the place. God wanted to give identity to his people. God wanted, after this over, now God did not give ten commandments to Abraham and Isaac. God did not give the ten commandments to, many people will be surprised, he didn't give to Adam and Eve. He didn't give to Abraham. Ten commandments is given at this point. Can you see the background of the Ten Commandments is after this Amalekite war is won and you move into the chapter Exodus, you will read, now Ten Commandments is given. What is it? God says, uh, you know, there will be <laughs> war from generation to generation to generation. Third generation, fourth generation, because you know why? God says this one. And I bring judgment from generation to generation. He is the generational God. The God you worship, worship is generational God. Today there is a generation raised. I do not know my father. I do not know what he teaches. I do not know what he do. My God's nature, he is a generational God. That's what I'm saying. What today we face in the world is a is a, is a spiritual war. Because you know why? The enemy comes to fight. There is no legitimacy to kill the innocent people, to innocent children. At this point, you know what? God has liberated Israel from cruel bondage. You, you can see that one. God did not give the Ten Commandments in the Garden of Eden. God did not give the Ten Commandments to Abraham. I call you, I'm giving you Ten Commandments. He didn't. Because God delivered Israel from the cruel bondage. Shall we shout cruel bondage? At this point, God shows the victory, how I am doing the warfare. But now he is giving the Ten Commandments. Mount Sinai. And then followed the second ch chapter 22, I believe. Is that a place where he has given the Ten Commandments? 21? Eh? 20. 20. He has given the Ten Commandments. The, see, the Bible reading is not sitting and reading a thing and say, oh, I'm not this, you form an opinion. Understand the character of God. Because now he liberated, now he's setting up a government here. What is Ten Commandments? Ten Commandments is a government. Shall we shout government? Ten Commandments is not commandment. You watch a film, oh, it's nice, Moses and Red Sea. Ten, ten Commandments, the government. God liberated Israel from bondage and brought them to the freedom and he shown the victory. But I tell you, from generation to generation, because uh, the, the battle will be there for generation to generation, all the nonsense that we read and see and heard, everything. You know, those who have been, some of you have been there in the Holocaust memorial, memorial. That's very, for some people it could be spooky. For some people they've done a fantastic job there. I wanted to take you to the Holocaust memorial. 
whenever foreign dignitaries comes, the first thing Israel used to do is to take the dignitaries to the, war, to the Holocaust Memorial. How many of you have been there and said Holocaust? Uh, please lift up your hands. Okay. Now some people here, I took them last time, and some of you might have gone on your own. It's worth going there. Whenever foreign dignitaries come, for the first time if they are coming, the first place Israel take them to Holocaust Memorial to show them what the nation has suffered. Nineteen forty seven, the world formed all the organizations, and today, living in two thousand twenty three. Israel suffered in the hands of the terrorists. Where it is coming from? I wept and cried. We put on the prayer. God is telling me something. Go to Israel. Go to Israel. God, what is Israeli? Okay, go to Israel. God is talking about Israel very clearly. I know there is a trouble. So I asked two people, two big independent insurance brokers, if there is a trouble, is there any insurance thing for all of us, please? They said, no, there is no insurance. I asked, including Gratian, ask him. <laughs> asked the biggest stockbroker. This is before the war broke out. God told me there is a trouble. Amalekites from generation to generation. Living in the time of 2023, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall fear no evil. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. When you turn to television, 3,000 dead, 4,000 dead. Ukraine is off the shadow, or off the radars, off the cameras of all the press. Israel there. Even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I fear no evil. The Lord God is preparing a table before you in the presence of the enemies. God given victory to Israel and he built an altar. He said, my banner, the Lord is my banner. Now he's giving 10 commandments. Why? Israel need to have a government. The government is not uh, the Prime Minister Netanyahu. Government is the government of the kingdom of God. Because when we got saved, I tried to give a government to people. It's not you need to do this one, you need to do this one. Because if the government is not there upon your shoulder, who are you? You know, I tried to teach the young people five things only I told. Don't miss any, any youth meetings. I'm sure one day I will come and uh, ask Hudson permission whether I can teach you guys these five principles. What I told is, know who you are. Don't miss it. When you learn, you know, you, I don't want you to teach the whole Bible. Sometimes you, you learn at home. When you know who you are, your identity is the most important thing wherever you go. Whichever country you go, they ask for your passport. In the kingdom of heaven, you need to pass through the thing. They know who is your identity. Hallelujah. When you know your identity is in Christ Jesus, it is not in a birch. You know, today morning, I had two, two of these sort of... Uh, Rosets about the Remembrance Sunday next week. I've forgotten. I just to tried to put on this sort and that sort, and I had to run to see Andrew and pray for him. I said, I looked at my identity. That rose is inside my heart. Whether it is on my shirt or not is a different matter. My identity is inside me, who I am. When you come to church life, don't think like that. He's from a council estate. He's from there. Your identity is not there. You are a, you are a wreck in your life. You're a wreck in your life. That identity is determining everything there. Total life will be misery and sin and trouble and rebellion. No obedience, nothing will be in your life. You'll be a person of a wreck in your life if you don't surrender to God completely. Not one day you give a new life, a government cup upon your life. People, I baptize you the same thing I tell you. 
If the government is not coming, nobody in this world, father, mother, our uncle, our auntie, our pastor, nobody can do anything. You will be reaching out to hell if the government is not coming upon your shoulder. In this church, I want to see youngsters, youth, I want to bring in a government upon your life. When the government upon your life, you are a victorious person. If it is not there, it's not going to help you in any way whatsoever. Okay? Are you all right? Good. Good. That's nice, girl. <laughs> the government makes all the difference. Government is, is about individual. If you receive, you receive. Take my yoke upon me. My yoke is light. My burden is light. My yoke is very. Government. What is my yoke? It's a government. If you take a seven oxen, and they put a yoke on the thing. You know, I used to love it going on. In those days, there is no tractor. I used to stand on the plow, so it level goes nicely. I used to play all the, <laughs> when, the when our fields are plowed. The yoke is on there. The government shall be upon the shoulder. Oh, Pastor Sam, I don't like. He said not to speak in the service. And what are you doing there? The yoke, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. Yoke is a government. The an oxen. He has got the face of an oxen. God's face is, he's the face of an oxen. He is the face, he has got the face of an eagle. Eagle see things from a different, but the face of an oxen, because he has got a government. That government is the kingdom God wants to put upon the church, upon the people. Not wandering around, you can waste your time, all your time running around everywhere, but if the government is not upon your shoulder, we are a lost course. We can have everything. A man can earn everything in this world, but if he misses the eternal life, the government upon his life is a lost person. Now God is giving the Ten Commandments. Let me quickly move on to the Ten Commandments. I'm not going to say, you all know Ten Commandments means he will tell. If I ask Sarah, she will tell everything there. As it's sort of a machine, she will read out now. If I ask, I'm not going to ask her what I tell you. <laughs> Ten Commandments, you all know. Yes, God say something here. I'm looking at the time. I want to minister to some people if I can, but I wanted to make sure that we, we understand we have the government, no matter who you are. The government, God doesn't put upon you because you are a highly qualified man, woman, and I deal with people who are earning 100,000 100, a year, but the government is not there. No, it is nothing to do with your status, nothing to do with your qualification, nothing to do with you're an accountant or a solicitor or a barrister or a consultant or a, or a doctor or a GP. Do, you know, it doesn't matter really who you are. The government, can, government of God can come to anybody if you wish to have. It's nothing to do with your natural attainment or our qualification. It can come to a child if the child wanted to have that government. If a teenager wanted to have that government, it comes upon you. Hallelujah. It's far more than salvation. You know when you say, Israel left completely Egypt, they come to this place, and here God is giving a government upon them. When you are born again, when you come into the kingdom, then the government should follow your life. Hallelujah. When you are saved, for us, for the church, when you are born again, it's not wandering around from place to place, church to church, without any identity whatsoever. And in the day of battle, you don't have any weapon in your hand. When the enemy comes to rob and steal and kill, you don't have the weapon. Because you know what is the weapon? It's the government is the weapon. God's government is the weapon. It's a place to men and women. Everybody has got a government. Not only just upon Chi, upon you, there is a government. The government is a ruling government. Don't covet the government. That government is upon that man for his family. Don't try to push and play. That government is, how do you rule and reign? There is a principle God put in there. What is, a, what is the thing you worship? What is the thing you do? I see man of God doing wonderfully well. I see man of God struggling. I dealt with a man two days ago. He knows about, he knows about Israel very well than anybody else. Can you walk in forgiveness? Can you walk in talk? No, I can't, I can't, I can't. Because they shake the government off the shoulder. 
my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Just take my yoke upon me. Tell your neighbor, take God's yoke upon you. It's light. Identity. What is, when you are born again, when you come into the kingdom, when you are born again, don't tell me, I was born again, I was baptized. I see people wandering around. Wandering around in the world without the government. Why people are coming? Everybody wanted to go to Britain. Why? There is not a northern nation in the world. You can go to get anything, pay 20,000 pounds on a boat. They arrive here. Why they arrive here? Is it that just there is a government? It's a richer nation. Russia is richer. Why everybody does not take a boat and go to, go to Russia or China? There is no government. People come to the country, even then there is no government. They go, oh, flag. I'm just, why don't you get the next boat and go to wherever you come from if you don't have a government, if you don't recognize the government in this nation? I'm bold. The government shall be upon his shoulder. Church, God says the judgment begin in the house of God. That's why I'm, I, I shiver before God. Because if you are not thought, oh, Pastor Sam said, fill the church with some idiots. That is not my job. My job is to see the government is upon your shoulder. When the government is upon your shoulder, seek the kingdom of God. All these things shall be added to your life. Devil wouldn't mind you run morning to evening. You, you eat the bread of laziness or you eat the bread of trouble and difficulties. When the government is upon your shoulder, you will know. The Lord God Almighty. I'm not going deeper into Ten Commandments. You know it all. Why God given the Ten Commandments at this point? Why is Israel's mistake? I tell you, Israel's mistake is this. Why? Holocaust Memorial. Now we're again in the same trouble. After this many years with all the Iron Dome. They didn't have Iron Dome. There are poor people in the ghettos in a different place. And the worst thing happened to them. And now other people say, oh, it never happened to Israel. It never happened to Israel. They all made up of these things. Holocaust deniers. It's the truth of the matter is terrible thing. You don't want to anybody in the world to happen. What happened recently is the same we are in. God wants to bring in government in our life. I'm focusing on our church. People need to understand who we are. What is happening in this world today I mean, quickly, for your sake, I just uh, run through the Ten Commandments uh, so that you know that uh, for some people, please read the Bible because my teachings are very, very deeper level teaching. If you don't study the Bible, it seems like a double edged Pastor Sam said something. Encourage youth uh, Hudson and Grace and others who handle the youth, teach them to read the Bible. Different time read. It's not, a, it's not a gossip center. This is a place where I want you to be doctrite. Doctorates in the Bible, in the character of God. So your life is transformed into the character of God. Mature. God is a generational God. God has got the spirit bring forth through the spirit of God, the dimension from generation to generation to generation. God can bring in there. God will say, I'll punish you from generation to generation to generation. I will fight. I pray for my grandchildren. God, none of them, none of them would be lost. Because easily done. Because you know why? When they don't understand, it comes from a generation to generation to generation. I will judge upon the third generation and the fourth generation. That's what we read here. Amalekites will be at war against the Amalekites from generation to generation. But the Lord's hand will be against them. Not against Israel. Israel will burn. But God given Israel the government. Government was given to Israel. The Ten Commandments was given to Israel. You know, we are lucky. As a nation, we believed in the same thing. Hallelujah. This excites me. Why, why do people come? People come for government. A government where there is rule of law, protection. Now, Ten Commandments, half an hour I have got. Let me go quickly. So, guys, I will try to bring this point across to you so we 
God is a good God. Ten Commandments. Can you put it on the screen for me, please? If you got that to chapter 28 in my phone. My phone is trying to pay somebody else instead. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, God is a good God. In the same chapter, you come across this. Okay, the first commandment is, thou shall not have any images. Uh, yeah. The first one is Exodus chapter 20, verse 3. Thou shalt have no other God before me. No other God. No rival party, nothing. Just to have nothing before me. It's uh, nothing. Thou shalt have no other God. 23. Please, th can you 23? Yeah, it's good. 23. Third, ye shall have no other God before me. Paul, can you shout that for me, please, so everybody can hear as well? Ye shall have no other God before me. Okay, four, please. Paul. You shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath yeah. or in the waters below. Yeah. So there is no other idol because you, th you can think God is not interested in the chariots and, uh, and the warriors. God is only our refuge, our fortress and when we don't have, this is God given to, he liberated showing all the mighty power. Red Sea opened up, Jordan stood still and all the people were afraid completely. The God of Israel is coming before them. They just given way, surrendered, and ran away, and lands, and everything they were running. They were afraid before the God of Israel because they heard what the Lord has done, and the Jordan completely opened, and all these things happened, and they were afraid. Even people, if you read in the Bible, you need to read the Bible because otherwise you won't understand what I'm saying. There is a particular people called K you know, that, that uh, Jebusite, Jebusite, or, yeah, Jebusite, that came to them to make a peace with Israel. To make a peace with Israel. They're not come to war. They make a peace with Israel. <coughs> the Kenna, people from Kenna. They just Kenna. They come to make peace with Israel. So they put on some clothes, old clothes, torn out clothes, and torn out shoes, and uh, bread, which is completely rotten bread, or a moldy bread, pretend though they are coming from a distant place, we know your God is great, we want to make a peace with you and an agreement with you. Children of Israel walked by covenant, okay? They entered into a covenant and they did not inquire God. Authority at the time, they did not inquire God, should we enter into a covenant with these people or not? The Bible says in that place, if you read, they did not inquire God, but they signed a treaty. And they later on find out they are not from a far off land. They are only living in the same place there. Israel was cheated. What happened at that time is happened now. These people living in there cheated completely Israel and killed the innocent people brutally. Okay? Now Israel woken up to find that these are not people in the far distant place. This is only nearby people who have done this. The Bible says, because we entered a covenant, Israel said, we entered into a covenant, we cannot break the God, the covenant, they made them as slaves, more or less working for them, like doing work in the altar, firewood cutting, and they lived there forever. This is the story I'm telling you. When Israel did not inquire God, they get into trouble. Should we do this one or not? Because they just did their own thing, entered into trouble, forever they lived in the same place because a covenant was made with them without inquiring God. Israel was supposed to inquire God for everything. Everything. This was the Ten Commandments. Now, I'm going to the next word. I hope you can get. Can you get the next one, please? Ten next commandment. Paul, read that, please, if it is there. Carry on.
shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his master, or maidservant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. This is what God has given. Thou shall not covet. Thou shall not kill. But God talks about the war to generation to generation. I will war against the thing. Where is the killing and where is the war? Your war leads to killing. That's what I'm saying. It is God is dealing with. It is a spiritual war. Every war around this world that is happening, the bloodshed, life is in the blood. It's a spiritual war. Hallelujah. Thou shalt not kill. Is it contradictory? No, it's not contradictory. Because when the government of the Lord is not kept up, automatically it triggers war. Nations are in trouble. Nations are in trouble. God said these are all abomination. Whatever the act of men or women, they are abomination to God. It triggers automatically the war starts in the spiritual realm. And death follows. Here is a generation to generation. Why war starts? This is the reason the war starts. Because immediately it triggers. You violate. You people living in the kingdom of God need to understand. Don't think that I was born again, given your life to Jesus. Often you trigger war. That heaven started a war. Because we, the heaven triggers the war because God's character is a righteous God. In the courtroom of heaven, there is a war starts because my daughter or my son is not living in sin, not living in sin, not in the holiness. A war is triggered against no matter who gives you support. Your mother-in-law gives support or your mother gives the support. Doesn't matter. A war is against you. You will be defeated. You will be defeated and completely defeated and dismantled from everything. Repent. This is what is very important. It automatically triggers the war. This is a spiritual war. That's why when you are born again, this government is give, given to you. How do we love the Lord? How we follow the Lord? Now I'm taking it to something different. This applies to everybody. You know, I come to tell you, make it personal to you so the government can operate on our lives. If the government is not operating, we are vulnerable before the devil. When the devil comes to you, need to attack your health, attack you completely, he need to have a legal right. There is no government upon him. There is no, oh, she's singing, she's doing all those things. No, but devil looks for a government. There is a government there upon his shoulder. You know what happened? Favors start coming. Thou shall observe the Sabbath. Thou shall not do any silly thing outside somewhere and, doing, and acting like a muppet. What happened? The government is not there. Why we should come together? Observe the Sabbath day. It is a Sabbath day. Oh, that is a Saturday. No. Whatever the day God has given, seventh day God was resting. On the day God I am resting there. You should never provoke God by violating the principles of God. Automatically it triggers and we cannot walk in the blessings of God. We walk in trouble. Why the war? God said that thou shalt not kill and now it's the war. Think for generation to generation, <coughs> automatically the heaven triggers the war. Principle is violated. Principles of God, the character of God is violated. God doesn't understand. God understand. God is a gracious God. We live in the glory of his grace. You know, that's a powerful thing. But now, you see, now come to, I, I want to take you to to Jesus. Now, Ten Commandments passed. Jesus came to save the world. Now, he is giving a commandment here. Now, what happened in the Bible? Let me, let me get that if I get it out, out quickly. Matthew chapter 22, I think, if I liked it. This is, uh, this is uh, God said very clearly to, and uh, when Jesus came, and he made it very, very clearly to people. Okay, Luke chapter 23.
Luke chapter 23, verse 34. This is Jesus' nature. Now, old, old covenant and Moses was given the rule. There is a government still valid. Every one of them is valid for us. It's not just to Moses. But God given something more through a new covenant with that. So he can create one new man with Israel as well as us. And all the world can become one thing. So Jesus started teaching some very fine stuff here. And... Uh, and Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they do. This is one bit. I'm going into the next one. And, uh, you know, this happened. Jesus, uh, in the chapter, you find this one. Forgive them. They do not know what they do. Luke chapter 2, verse 26, verse, chapter 6, verse 27 to 28. Uh, you know, and Jesus said, love your enemies. Okay? Chapter 6. Uh, Luke chapter 6, please. Just go back to 6, if you can. Luke chapter 6. Verse 27 to 28. But I tell you, who hear me, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who ill treat you. Here is a miracle. When you obey this one, extraordinary miracle will happen in your life. Okay? It's not easy. Because it's not easy. It is not against our nature. You know? If, 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 if Brother Samuel give me a birthday card, I give him a birthday card. And if he doesn't give me, I don't give one to him. I'm not saying you should give one to me. I'm not expecting one. And I say, oh, yes, I need to give. But you see, the God's character through Jesus Christ is completely different here. Completely the nature of Christ. The government is upon his shoulder. The government, the true government now is upon the church. Upon the church, which include Israel as well, that's why Ten Commandment is for Israel as for us, us. And Jesus said, tell you, love your enemies and do good to those who hate you. Bless all those who curse you. Pray for those who ill treat you. So some of the people may not like your enemies and pray for them. God, you know, somebody hate me in my workplace, I will go to pastor and pray for, and he will put a curse on my enemies and they will all be crushed. I will be victorious in the hospital. Forget it! If you believe in Jesus, if you come to this church, I teach you something very different. Oh, my wife is not like that. I'm leaving my wife and going there. Or my husband is like that. Do you understand? Husband will give account to God for his behavior. And wife will give account to God for her behavior. We are not connected. God given individual punishment. Adam... This is what it is. Eve, this is what your punishment is. He gave on proportionality. In today, a lot of people talk about proportionality. He was giving punishment. Here is a punishment for Eve. Here is a punishment for... Punishment for... God is individual. Individual. He's not corrective. He gave individual. Hallelujah. It's a wonderful God, but I tell you, who hear me, Love your enemies. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for all those who ill treat you. I had experience, I can tell you, my own personal experience, people who done the wrong things and things, and I applied these same principles, they could go nowhere. It's very difficult for you. Our human reaction, how do you get God's character? How do you get, oh, we are, I want to teach you about God's character. It doesn't come easily. My greatest miracle in life happened only when I forgive the people I cannot forgive. It's not you praying 10 times, 20 times and read the Bible back to front. You live in a bitterness. What happened actually is no good. You might have left Moab but still come to Israel and their bitterness is ruling your heart. Repent. Repent. Ten Commandments. Is, this is what God has given. And this is we continue to read. Just to do good. When they are evil, you do good. With so much difficulty in my heart, wrenching, I started praying for them. Three o'clock in the night, God, you are asking me to pray for that person in this middle of the night. It is winter, cold, ice outside. Yes, yes, yes. You go on your knees and pray. 
the government is well established on you. And that's the moment you see miracles in your life. Impossible thing beginning to happen. It's not, pastor is not a magic for you. Go to pastor, pray, and he pray for you. I'm not that sort of a pastor. You won't get it. But I want to say the government is steady upon you. And this government will shake you wherever you go. Wherever the, they won't, they won't look at your face. There's something about you, Brother Samuel, and they will tremble. The world should not tremble. The world should tremble about you. You should not tremble before the world. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. That's the church I would like to see. Some people, you know, I just take them alongside. When you go there, you piggyback and stand with them, and you want them to stand with you. Would they stand with you or not? It is their problem. They are not covenanted people. They do their own thing and get ruined and destroyed by the devil and judgment of God come upon the people. I can't help it because we live in a free world. They do their own thing or they become very smarter. And then the smarter thing God doesn't like. God likes just before God, learn to be a lamb before God and he will make you a lion before the devil. And many people try to be a lion. Oh, I know it all. I know more than Pastor Sam. Yes, okay, you might know, but walk in humility. <laughs> if you don't, you'll be trembling before the enemy. This, this night, this morning, I want to give glory to God, but I want to tell you, yeah, one day, an expert man came to Jesus. It is in the Bible. I hope I can take you that uh, quickly, if I can. Yeah, it is there in the, yeah, it's running away from me. Okay, Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. 34. Verse 34. Matthew chapter. Can you get it on the screen for me, please? Matthew chapter 22. Sorry. Matthew chapter 22. Verse 34 onwards. Yeah. Here what happened in this particular passage, an expert in law. Shall we shout an expert in law? Not an ordinary stupid fellow asking Jesus a question, an expert in law. In Israel, there are experts there in law, knowing God's law. He's coming and asking, that is the paragraph here. What he says, one of them, oh yeah, it is, the Bible also says, an expert in the law tested him with this question, teacher, which is the greatest commandment in law. So Jesus immediately turned around, next one please, Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart. Shall we shout with all your heart? All your heart. Not Mickey Mouse game you play in your life, you will be fooled. You'll be fooled and you dreadful to fall into the hand of God. Many people foolishly fall into the hand of God. I've seen teenagers, youngsters destroyed by the things of God because they're foolish, absolutely foolish. Where does the foolishness come from? From the devil. We need to cut off everything that comes from the devil. Jesus replied, love your Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. The three things that will destroy you, because the mind will rule you, your soul will destroy you, walk to all sorts of a thing in the internet and watching all the nonsense and listening to all the nonsense and everything you will lead because you, you are not worshipping the Lord God with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your heart. You had it. Jesus was teaching simple. I'm, it's not Pastor Sam, he's saying with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. When it is not there, girl or boy, you are in trouble. Uh, Pastor Sam, you are in trouble. <laughs> are you okay? With all your soul, with all your mind, with all your body. If you are, you are in trouble. All the silliness goes on the internet. All the friends who are going astray in your life, in the world, is not going to rescue you. One day you'll end up in the hell. You have to blame yourself. You can't blame your mother. You can't blame your father. You can't blame your pastor. You can't blame your husband. You will be ended up in the place. No doubt about it because the Lord God says, what is the greatest commandment? Is the expert in law. Now I told you the Ten Commandments. Now expert in law is asking the question, which is the greatest commandment? 
Love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Hallelujah. Next word, please, quickly. <coughs> this is the first and the greatest commandment. Now, Israel come out of the bondage into the freedom, and God given the Ten Commandments, the shoulder, government will be upon the shoulder, and this is Isaiah, Isaiah 9, chapter coming there, the church should have this. Love the Lord God with all your heart. This is the first and greatest commandment. I'm not loving the internet, I'm not loving the cinema, I'm not loving the, all the books reading, I'm not loving all the DVDs, I'm not loving all, the, all my waste of time in the pub and the drinks and the friends and all those things, but I am loving the Lord with all my heart, all my soul. See, what happened? The government rests upon you. I, I, don't, I don't want to teach you some flimsy stuff. You clap the hand and laugh and go home. I want to teach you stuff that make the government rest upon you. Wherever, in the school, when you come to anything, the government should rest upon you. Government rests upon this. New Testament is more powerful. Now, Jesus' teaching is this. This is the first and the greatest commandment. Carry on, next one, please. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment? And the second is, it is like this, love your neighbor as thyself. Problem. Problem. Neighbor, all sorts of a neighbor there. I'm sure that the pastors, uh, uh, you know, when you go through the thing, neighbors are not easy. You know, they made some soap opera neighbors. <laughs> and I'm not saying go and watch the neighbors. <laughs> and if you do, you repent. <laughs> okay. Neighbors. How do we? Brother Samuel's neighbor is not as his faith. He's a different person's faith. But he said, I'll give you the taxi, and I will do that. I'll do this. Love your neighbors. The second commandment is not, thou shalt not kill. Jesus is saying the second greatest commandment is, love your neighbor as yourself. See, so don't fool yourself. I'm not into fooling you. I'm telling you some good stuff. Don't play around with God. You can play around with me, but you don't play around with God. God says, love your neighbors. No, I don't want to know the neighbors. I don't want them to know you. You are a reclusive person living in a world one day waiting for devil to solo, devour you completely. Government is upon the shoulder. Think something different. At the second, it is like this. Love your neighbor as yourself. Verse 40, please. Verse 40. All the law and the prophet hang on these two. All the law and all the pastors, all the prophets and all the apostles hang on these two commandments. Now you understand what is a spiritual war, what is a natural war. If we love the Lord, he will fight the battle for us. Love the Lord God with all your hearts. If you love the internet, if you love all the nonsense that's going on in the internet, you spend most of your time on those things, women repent. Men repent. Hallelujah. Repent. If you don't repent, wickedness will take you over. There's no doubt about it. Don't abandon. Oh, I can't do this one. Devil will bring every excuse not to come together. Come late for the church. Continuously come late for the church. Because we don't have a love with all our soul, all our mind there, what will happen? You will be there on time. It's not about Hudson shouting about the time. If all our soul, all our heart is there for God, what will happen is very important. I need to be there on time. Apply this principle in your life. You know, it's not an indicator. When you go to a hospital, they look at everything there. Oh, this doesn't indicate. They use a very technical word. I'm sure Hepsiba will correct me. And uh, this doesn't indicate an operation. That's what they use. <laughs> Am I right in saying that it's a terminology? This doesn't need, this doesn't indicate an operation need to be done. Because they assess everything there. It's so a devil comes to them, oh, she loves the Lord with all her heart, all her soul and mind. I cannot get nearer to her. He may trouble you, Marjorie, 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 but if the government is there, devil back off. All the law of the prophets hang on these two commandments. This is what Jesus said. 
don't misquote me, Jesus said, because you know why? Love the Lord with all your heart. You don't judge others. You just uh, encourage them. Walk in the place. You can do it. You can do it. Shall we stand before the living God? All this thing, hang on this command, two commandments. Love the Lord God with all your heart. Ten commandment was given. Thou shalt not kill. Why do we kill others? Because we don't love our neighbors uh, as thyself. And pray for the enemies. Uh, pray for the things. Say, God said to Israel, thou shalt not kill. Vengeance is mine. Get said to so many things, you know, in the midst of all the prayers and everything there. Continue to pray for Jerusalem, the peace of Jerusalem. That is God's law, God's rule. But understand, the government, of sh government should be on my shoulder. All eyes closed in this place. Don't mess around with anybody. Just keep your eyes closed, please.